Hey everyone, this is Tankenstein coming to you live and direct from Illinois, Nora, the center of everywhere to bring to you today a complete and comprehensive guide for how to fly the ME262. I'll be going over a ton of this video and I will be going over its four main variants. That includes the A1A, the A1U1, and the two C variants, which are the C1A and the C2B. I'll be going over quite a bit in this, including their stats, what the planes are good at, what they're not so good at, how to maximize their potential, and really what their overall role is, as well as giving you some tips and tricks throughout. Remember, please like, comment, and subscribe. But without further ado, let's get into it. So let's start with the most basic of the basic ME262s, and that is the A1A. A little disclaimer for this video, I will not be going over the Narwhal or the A1U4, and I will not be going over the A2A, uh, being that those are more unusual planes and they deserve kind of videos by themselves. So with the A1A, it has a top speed in realistic of 865 kilometers per hour, a turn time of 28 seconds, rate of climb of 20 meters per second, and a burst mass of 14.52 kilograms per second, coming from four short-barreled 30 millimeter MK108 cannons. And as you can see here, it's secondary are R4M aerial burst rockets, or at least you can make them aerial bursts as I have them here. They sit at 800 meters, but really you could set them between 200 and 1,000, and also for them to explode on impact. So this being said, with the exception of the A2A, the A1A is the only ME262 to have secondary armaments, and it doesn't even have bombs. The A2A holds that distinction. Essentially, the A1A will be a pure interceptor. So being that the ME262 A1A is essentially the foundation for all of the 262 variants from the A1A throughout the C2B, I will say this about all of the 262s. Their main strength would be their high, albeit inaccurate, damage output, with their overall speed and dive rate being both extremely impressive. Additionally, the 262 all variants have good high speed handling characteristics relative to their size and weight as really they're just some of the best planes to use in head-ons in the game, especially when you're equipped with the R4M rockets or the massive armament of the A1A as you can see in the video here. So this being said, the 262s are deficient in the areas of handling and agility acceleration, rate of climb, though this is fixable if you do have the rocket boosters, like on the C variants, and overall durability, due to its incredibly exposed engines. It is this poor low speed agility that makes it absolutely necessary to never get into a turn fight with almost every fighter in the game. They will destroy you. To this, like with every play in the game, but especially the 262s, you need to use your advantages in your favor. A high dive rate plus large burst means that this is the king of boom and zoom aircraft. Combine that with a relatively decent high speed agility factor and you can take your skill with the ME262 from being possibly terrible to being possibly amazing. I highly recommend learning about the ME262 historically uh, versus allied fighters and researching Luftwaffe tactics. They knew these planes best and those flight models are restored fairly accurately in War Thunder, meaning you can replicate everything they did to great effect. Just a little fun fact here, the ME262 was initially supposed to have engines blend in with the fuselage, but the overall size, weight, and design of the Junkers Jumo 004 engines kept this from happening which is why they not only had to be moved to the wings, but is also the reason why we see the swept back wings in every ME262. So apart from the generalities I just mentioned, the A1A is again the most basic and really the foundation of the 262s. And you should treat it essentially again as a boom and zoom fighter and also as an interceptor. If you can gain altitude quickly enough, which you should be able to, especially in realistic and especially in arcade, take out bombers first and foremost. Avoid confrontations with all fighters. There is a good chance, especially if you have to fly with the more advanced ME262s, that you will face MiGs and those will tear you apart with no issue. Try to get on the inside track of every fighter. This is a dogfighter second. 
Again, interceptor first, dogfighter second. So as I just went over the foundations of the ME262 with the A1A, which is again, essentially the base for which all the other ME262s are played, the A1U1 is essentially the same plane, at least via the flight model. It is slightly heavier and thus turns a little bit wider and also has a slightly lower rate of climb, but there's a great reason for this. Instead of the four MK-108 cannons that the regular ME-262s share, this has two MK-108s, two long barrel MK-103s, and also two MG-151 cannons, which amounts for just a slightly higher amount of burst, but an incredibly varied and incredibly deadly armament, and it also gives you the ability to attack ground opponents. However, you will likely not be doing that because this is still at, at heart an interceptor, but the addition of the 20 millimeter cannons really gives this thing a lot of credence uh, towards being a dogfighter, as it allows you to get more lead down range and really just shoot at smaller targets more accurately. Similar to the A1A, the A1U1 is essentially also the same plane when it comes to its strengths and weaknesses, except that this has the addition of two more cannons and also a more varied armament, and as such you can have different ammunition choices. Uh, but that does not mean that your role should really change. You should still first and foremost always be an interceptor. I know that after an early game uh, it becomes kind of difficult to be interceptor being that uh, fewer people are bombers, however, that will be your main goal. The only reason why I was in the trenches for this match for a large portion of it is because I had engine damage with my A1U1 and as such was flying lower altitude because I couldn't achieve higher speed and thus higher altitude. Now the C variant is where the real fun begins for the ME262 and of course the A1A and the A1U1 are excellent planes by themselves. The C variants fix the primary issue with the A variants, and that is the fact that they simply don't have enough acceleration. This issue was fixed by essentially just strapping rocket engines uh, to the plane and kind of building them into it. And with the C1A, as you see here, it had a single rocket engine coming out of the back of the plane. And as you'll see in just a few moments, the C2B had two rocket engines with one each being mounted just behind the BMW 003 engines, which is a unique feature to the C2B, being that the normal ME262s, even the C1A, had the Junkers Jumo 004. Now, neither of these planes, much like basically every other ME262 currently in game, minus the A1A and also the A2A, have any secondary armaments. So that will limit your role a little bit, but not all too much, being that this is really just a supercharged version of your regular ME262s. This said, the biggest danger with the C series is that you can simply go too fast. And if you are spared your wings breaking off entirely, which can happen around 1,050 kilometers per hour, you'll be in danger of having your controls lock up which is something that happened often enough in reality for ME-262 pilots if they were not careful. This being said, both planes have around 3 minutes of rocket fuel that gives an insane amount of burst, regardless of the variant. These planes are both 8.0 BR currently and can absolutely demolish other 8.0 planes, whereas regular ME-262s would struggle and be competitive with even 9.0 planes in some cases. This is because their primary issue, the lack of acceleration and low climb rate, are largely fixed by the addition of the rocket engines. And as such, this means that the C variants will not have the issue of low speed turning, which is one of the worst parts of any ME-262. Used sparingly, the rocket engines can be used to great effect to give you acceleration and speed when you need it, and shut off when you don't. The biggest downside to these rockets is that they do add weight to the planes and as such when your engines are off you will turn more slowly than a regular ME-262, accelerate slower, and will be more sluggish in flight in general. If this occurs make it a priority to land and refuel. 
This issue is greater with the C2B, being that there are two rockets attached to the engines, whereas the C1A only has one rocket in the tail. Alternatively, this means that the C2B is better while the rockets are firing, but again, worse when not when compared to the C1A. Now, as mentioned before, this is essentially just a supercharged version, both of the C variants are, of the regular ME262s. Your primary role in these aircraft, as, a, as they are essentially the same plane, is with almost all ME262s to be an interceptor first and a dogfighter second. With these planes, especially, you will have the ability to charge to any altitude to destroy bombers high in the sky. The climb rate of these planes, especially the C-2B, is unparalleled with the exception of the ME-163 and the KI-200 until you start seeing afterburners. One very important thing to note with these planes is that the stat card does not show the real rate of climb as it only shows the rate of climb for these planes when they do not have their rockets engaged. The C-1A is not too different from the C-2B in terms of speed and acceleration. Whatever difference you do end up seeing between the C-1A and the C-2B, while not meaningless, is not all too important, as you will be accelerating and climbing faster than almost all planes at 8.0 BR. One thing to note is that due to the increased speed of these planes while boosted, Dogfighting becomes substantially easier, but you will still want to try to boom and zoom first. If that does not work, use your incredible acceleration to boost out of the fight to gain sufficient distance between you and your enemy, and then turn back and either do a head-on with your four 30mm cannons, and I will link my head-on tutorial below, or, more preferably, repeat the boom and zoom tactic again and again. The only problem with booming and zooming is that these planes, depending on your speed, do not have the best roll rate, and as such, can really make it difficult to target nimble enemies from a dive. This all being said, the ME-262 in any of its variants is truly an incredible fighter, especially when considering its history. It serves in War Thunder as both an interceptor and heavy fighter with punishing 30mm cannons that can annihilate any enemy with the mere pull of the trigger. I highly recommend you unlock and buy each of these planes, especially if you're a history buff. Flying these planes against supposedly superior Korean War jets or against the World War II era Allied jets that never got to fight is truly an amazing feeling. Remember, gain altitude, shoot down bombers, boom and zoom fighters, and then rinse and repeat, and you will be the Luftwaffe's top scoring ace in no time. Please remember to subscribe and click the notification bell if you like my video. Either way, this is Tankenstein signing out for today. Not saying goodnight, just saying. I hope you all have a great day, a great night, and a great whatever it is that you're doing. Thanks for watching and take care.